Being located in the Music City, this building has hosted a lot of great music acts since its inception, but this is what she was made for, NFL football, and that's what we have today in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up. Well, the Titans offense going back to work, and Charles, as mentioned, this team got hot late in the year last season, made it all the way to the AFC Championship game. Is that something that you could see them maybe doing again? Well, any team with Derrick Henry has a chance to do it again. You talk about a running back where on the defensive side of the ball, you don't want to deal with him over the course of four quarters because of his speed and, of course, his power. And don't forget, they lost Jack Conklin at right tackle. He signed with Cleveland. So what did they do? They drafted Isaiah Wilson out of Georgia to play right tackle and continue to run the football with force. I also think A.J. Brown had a terrific year as a rookie receiver. He'll keep helping them develop out on the perimeter for quarterback Ryan Tannehill. But the defense partner, that's where we got out the conversation, right? 21st best in the NFL. Didn't do a lot in the draft with it. But I do think Rashawn Evans and Jalen Brown are terrific linebackers. Kevin Byers, one of the better safeties in the league. They'll keep expecting these guys to get better and play well. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Tannehill to his top target, Brown, for a Tennessee first. Nice play on the ball by A.J. Brown, and he comes up with the reception. He had a terrific 2019 as a rookie. The first one since 1970 to go over 1,000 yards receiving and average over 20 yards per catch. Tannehill on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's third down. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Tannehill throwing again. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. And last year's All-Pro punter Brett Kern on to punt for Tennessee. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Now the Colts offense going back to work. The, the new look Colts offense, I guess we should say, they made a lot of changes really on both sides of the ball since their 7-9 season of a year ago. And the biggest change? Just look at the quarterback. It's Phillip Rivers coming in from the Chargers where he'd spent his entire career. You also have to look at the offensive backfield as well. Marlon Mack, he carries the ball well for them, and now they had a Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin in the draft. That's a heck of a one-two punch, and Frank Reich, their head coach, says they're going to ride the hot hand in terms of carries. Now you also add Michael Pittman on the perimeter, and then DeForest Buckner coming over from the 49ers. That should help as well, CD. It certainly should, and I think it's going to be enough for them to push Tennessee and Houston for the division crown. Remember, they were in the playoffs two seasons ago. 2019 was a step back and a bit of a disappointment. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. Five yards. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. 
And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. On second down now, it's Mack. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. A gain of Good pick up there by Marlon Mack. And he was a 1,000-yard runner in 2019 and has been very consistent in moving the ball for the Colts. Last two seasons, at least eight touchdowns rushing each year. A couple of first downs on the drive already as he'll go from the 47 now on first down. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. By Jack Crawford. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And nowhere to get away. Rivers is dropped. There's Vic Beasley. Always tough to block as he gets in to bring him down. And that's exactly why Tennessee signed him. They want to see more of that from Vic Beasley, a sack there. And in 2019, had the second best year of his career with eight sacks and two forced fumbles. Had 15 and a half sacks in 2016 when he was a first team all pro. He's going to air one out. And that is intercepted, or was it? Wait, they'll say no. No interception. He did not keep the feet in bounds, apparently. So that's just going to be an incompletion. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Adam Humphreys deep for the Titans. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that. will feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. And this will be caught by Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. 
Running jet sweep here, Humphreys. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. No gain on the play. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Good catch there by Jack Doyle, who went to the Pro Bowl in 2019, but now has a new quarterback in Phillip Rivers, and he wants to be the Antonio Gates that Phillip Rivers threw to with the Chargers. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Complete Good yardage down. there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there and he just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Rivers hands this one to Mack. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Now an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick? The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck, DeForest Buckner. Sack there by DeForest Buckner. Boy, was he big news around the draft in 2020 when the Colts traded their 13th overall pick for him. He absolutely solidifies their defensive front. Great interior pressure that they haven't been able to exhibit in recent seasons. Throwing on second and long, Tannehill. And this one complete to Smith. And I think the ball's out, and the Colts pick it up. 
Tannehill's pass complete. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that'll be considered a fumble. But good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Following the fumble recovery, Tannehill. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taken in at the 22. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. Start on the ground with Hines. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. The ball carrier. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. A play fake to Mack. Now Rivers. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. The tackle made Three by yards him. there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Three on the yeah, they really needed to get something first going, down. didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Rivers on first down. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Rivers. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle, the Pro Bowl tight end. And that'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Rivers. They'll run the screen with Mack. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 11 yards there, first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To the air again here, Rivers. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. To throw again, Rivers. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 23. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First down. And what a nice example there of a tight end 
doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. First down, Rivers. That's into the hands of Pascal. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Grabbed there by Zach Pascal. And he's one of those guys that often people forget are even on the roster, but when you look up at the end of the game, He's produced over 600 yards and five touchdowns in 2019. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. This defense is really pulling around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Middle of the field, he finds Pascal. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A 15-yard touchdown grab as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And that drive we just saw that culminated in a touchdown, exactly what many offenses are looking for. Sustained ones that can impose their will on the other team. Let's go, let's go. and goal at the one. Looking to run with Mack. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. No gain. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. They'll try to run with Hines. And he takes it in for a Colts score. Touchdown. Naeem Hines taking it in. And the Colts have taken the lead. No success on first down. He couldn't get any yardage. They give it to him again, and he finds the end zone. Sometimes it just has to be persistence, doesn't it? And you know who else helps with that? Offensive line. After a team's been stuffed, the last thing they want to do is go to a different play call. They want to come back and do it again and show that they can dominate the line of scrimmage. Rigoberto Sanchez. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Uh, I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Darius Leonard, the linebacker, able to break that one up. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver. But now it'll be third down. 
They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. The Titans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. A man who has done this a lot, Justin Houston, in there to record the sack. Nice pass rush there by Justin Houston, culminating in a sack. And the move to Indianapolis in 2019, absolutely rejuvenating. Plus, he changed positions from outside linebacker to defensive end and had his first double-digit sack season since 2014. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. Three yards the game there, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Over the middle. It's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. And it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well. And that one's incomplete. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, Rivers. And he's got his man, Hilton. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Hilton's first catch, good for a first down. Reception there by T.Y. Hilton, and he absolutely terrifies defenses when he gets downfield. Speed, shiftiness, excellent hands. Five 1,000-yard seasons in his career. On first and 10, Rivers. He's got Jack Doyle. Not much there, only a yard. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. On second down, here's a run with Mac. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. The ball carrier. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And Pascal's got it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 19. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. And the Colts. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. On first down, Mack. Bringing him down defensively, Jayon Brown. Ball carrier. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. To throw is Rivers. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. Well, that takes to start you off a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And Old Mo is a very, very fickle man. And that sack leaves Rivers and the Colts with a third and long. Throwing Rivers. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And brought down, but not before.
before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Good catch there by Naheem Hines, and I think that he's probably popped on some Phillip Rivers tape and how he used Austin Eckler out of the backfield with the Chargers as a model for what he wants to do this season. He's had at least 40 catches in each of the last two years. He probably expects that number to rise. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Rivers. And he's got his man. It's Hilton Rivers. for the Colts Rivers. touchdown. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Seven yards, the pick up there. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Tannehill able to find Henry out of the backfield. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. That catch good for only a couple. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. And incomplete. They tried to drop it off, but he couldn't hold on. Yeah. 
Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead, no need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try to add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. The end result, 21 yards. A gain of 21 How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had a big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. Left side, Doyle with it. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Rivers now. And his throw is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Yards to go. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll throw again. Rivers. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Again, it's Rivers. Catch made here by Campbell. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Rivers again. He'll check this down to Hines. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And this a 39-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Khalif Raymond now. 
And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This will be fielded inside the five. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Out come the Colts, they'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They built a good first half lead, now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. First down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Throwing again on second down. Rivers, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 35. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. First down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell. And now it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Rivers, and down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Jayon Brown leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. Third and long. And that sack leaves Rivers in the Colts with a third and long. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Well, oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. And, Charles, they trail by three scores. Look, they're not completely out of this, but it's sort of go time right now. Yeah, and they knew that coming out after halftime, it was going to take a collective effort to get back into this ball game. The defense got the stop for them, so maybe that can get things started. Now the offense has to pick their game up as well. If they can put a score on the board, Hey, they could get back in it in a hurry. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. On second down, here's Henry. And he'll be brought down right around 
the 37. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Nice carry there by Derrick Henry. Picks up a first down. And when you say workhorse, you're thinking about Derrick Henry. Won the rushing title in 2019 with 1,540 yards on the ground and 16 rushing touchdowns. Went to his first Pro Bowl and carried his team to the AFC Championship game. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. The tackle made three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got to just pin their ears back and get after him now. On second down, it's Henry. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And this one complete to Smith. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. Okay. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Indy set to go on offense once more. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Now this is Hilton on the receiving end. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run on first down. Hines. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Operating from the gun. Rivers, Campbell making the catch. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 13. It's a first down. First down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Jonathan Joseph there for the tackle. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Rivers on the money complete, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 35. A gain of 13, it's a first down. gain of 13 yards. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. On first down, it's Mack. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. He was brought They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Three yards to go on second down, and they've got three tight ends out there. Jumbo set. Now Rivers, taken in by the tight end, Doyle. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 17-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Throwing on second and three. Rivers. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Naeem Hines. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 27, Tannehill. He finds Corey Davis. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there, first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And getting this just shy of midfield is spotted at the 49. Ten more there and another first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither of runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and ten. He's going deep for Brown. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, but it's going to be second down. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. Second 10 coming up here in Nashville. Third quarter action. Tannehill with a throw caught by Brown. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. 12 yards there and a first down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big-time arm strength. Very nice route. 
Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Henry. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. A gain of two. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now on second and 13, Tannehill, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Intended for at this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They snap it to Tannehill. Towards the end zone for Brown. And this is going to be incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So a tough pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it, should they not? Is it the right play call? Is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. A play fake to Mac. Now Rivers. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He, was he did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four. But not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it, now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Again, it's Henry. 
And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Titans on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This time it's third and three. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. Fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And the Colts getting ready to go. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. Rivers going to bring the Colts up first and 10 at their own 44. Here's a handoff to Hines to begin the drive. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. This is Hines. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. The ball carrier. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its face. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On second down now, it's Mack. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. They run with Hines. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 44. And he'll drop here to throw. He's got Smith here. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. Their own 45-yard line. On first down, they'll start out with Mack. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Ball carrier. Good game there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And some room to run now. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, 
he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Down at the 23-yard line. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Running the sweep, Hilton with it. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's a gain of three. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league. No question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains. That was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And the catch made by Hilton. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Rodrigo Blankenship for the Colts field goal. A 27-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. But wait up now, a flag is down. If this is on the defense... They're going to get the first. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. They come out with one back and three tight ends. So now then, the penalty's got them set up with a first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at him. And he's going to find Doyle in the end zone for a cold score. Doyle. Touchdown. Phillip Rivers with his third touchdown pass of the game as his guys continue to pour it on. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Makes the score Colts 31, Titans nothing. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. 
Raymond now on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. On first and 10, Tannehill. Got a man, it's Brown. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Tannehill throwing complete there to Humphreys. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. First down, Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Derrick Henry, the intended receiver, out of the backfield. And that'll bring up second down. You tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Again, Tannehill. He gets it to Humphreys. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They were trying to go to Brown once again, but it'll be second and goal. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan, and especially the execution. And now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. 
Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And I think here, the score dictates you pretty much got to go for it. But when you look at the scoreboard and you realize that three doesn't do you a whole lot of good in this situation, you're exactly right. Dial up one of your better plays and get after it. Forget the field goal kicker. He doesn't matter. A 22-yard attempt. The kick by Joseph is good. And now they'll just need four touchdowns as the deficit is now 28. Well, it's a Pyrrhic victory at best, but Charles, no team wants to get shut out. So it's hard to blame them for taking the three there. You can't blame them one bit. It hasn't been the best performance. That's for darn sure. But there is something to be said for fighting to avoid the goose egg. And they're at least trying to finish out strong. Joseph now to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got a plan to catch. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Starting the drive with a give to Mack. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. The Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. It's a gain of well, we're beyond the tone yards. setting right now. This guy's and been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Nashville, good night, everybody.